Have you ever looked for a neat and easy way to create a fall text effect in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hello everyone, my name is Andre Marius and in this same Vato Task Plus tutorial, I will teach you how to make your own set of leaf brushes and how to use them to create a fall text effect in Adobe Illustrator. For the text, you will need this Etna font from Envato Elements, so make sure to check out Envato Elements, where with a simple subscription you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets, such as music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's open Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu, set the width to 850 and the height to 500. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 300 pixels per inch, and then click this button to create your new document. You can press Ctrl and 0 to fit the artboard on your entire screen, and then go to View and Show Grid to enable the grid and again to view and snap to grid which will enable the snap to grid feature. For this tutorial you will need a grid line every one pixel, so let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid, enter one in this grid line every box, keep the subdivisions set to one, click ok and now as you can see you have a grid line every one pixel. You can press ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on your grid, and before we start the work on the design, let's open all the panels that will be used throughout this tutorial. Just go to window in the menu bar and open the appearance panel, the brushes panel, the color panel, the gradient panel, the info panel, the pathfinder panel, the swatches panel, and don't forget the character panel. Now that you're set, you can start the work on your first leaf design. Pick the ellipse tool from your toolbar. Select the stroke and remove the color, double click the fill color and replace it with 175, 172 and 42. To create your new shape you can either click and drag or much easier you can click on your artboard which will open this window where you can easily set the size for the shape that you need to create. Adjust the width to 24 and the height to 54. Click OK to create this new shape and you can press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this new shape. Switch to the anchor point tool from your toolbar. Just click these two points to turn them into sharp points. And now go to Effect, Warp and Shell Lower. Make sure that the horizontal box is checked. Set the bend slider to 10%. Click OK to apply this effect and then go to Object and Expand Appearance, which will expand your effect. With this shape still selected, let's press Ctrl-C and Ctrl-F to add a copy in front. Deselect this copy and double click the fill color from your toolbar. Change it to 150, 148 and 43. Select the rectangle tool from your toolbar and use it to create a shape that covers the right half from your leaf shape. Switch to the move tool, hold down the shift key and select this rectangle along with the copy of your leaf shape and just click this intersect button from the pathfinder panel. Make sure that you have nothing selected and press shift and x which will swap the fill and stroke color settings. Double click the stroke color and replace the existing color with 122, 121 and 15. Select the line segment tool from your toolbar or the pen tool and use this tool to create a 62 pixels vertical path. Keep in mind that you can hold down the shift key to easily make it a perfect vertical line. Have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 62 pixels. And when you are there you can release the mouse button. Switch to the selection tool and use it to move this path in this exact location. And then focus on the appearance panel to stylize this stroke. Just click the stroke button which will open the stroke flyout panel. 
increase the weight to two points, select width profile number four from this drop down menu, and don't forget to check this round cap button. Now that your vertical path is complete, let's reselect the line segment tool from the toolbar and use it to create some horizontal paths. Start with an 8 pixels path. Use the selection tool to move this new path in this exact location. Hold down the shift key and let's drag it 15 pixels down. Hold down the alt key and drag a copy of this path 6 pixels down. Repeat the technique and drag a copy 9 pixels down. And again one more copy, let's drag it 11 pixels down. With this path selected, let's go to the control panel and increase the width to 12 pixels. Select this other path and bump it to 22. And for this other path, let's go to 18 pixels. Now hold down the shift key to select all these vertical paths. Go to the appearance panel and open the stroke flyout panel to select width profile number one and then go to object, path and add anchor points. This will add an anchor point in the middle of the path for each of these paths. Make sure that you switch to the direct selection tool from your toolbar and let's start by selecting this middle anchor point from the top horizontal path. Drag it 4 pixels down and remember that you can hold down the shift key to constrain the movement of this point. Move to the next two paths, hold down the shift key to select both middle anchor points and drag them 7 pixels down. And for this final path, again select the middle point and drag it just 5 pixels down. Switch back to the selection tool from your toolbar, hold down the shift key to select all four paths and go to effect, warp and arc. Make sure that this horizontal box is checked and that the band is set to 10%. Click OK to apply the effect and now select all the shapes that make up your lift design and press Ctrl G to group them. Now in the control panel you can see that you have a group selected and let's go to effect, warp and flag. This time lower the band to 5% and check this vertical box. Click OK to apply the effect and this will be your first lift design. Moving to the second lift design, let's start by pressing Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Double click the fill color and replace this color with 239, 128 and 32. Select the ellipse tool and use it to create a 44 by 58 pixels shape. Remember that you can press Ctrl plus or Ctrl minus to zoom in on this new shape. Switch to the anchor point tool from your toolbar. Click this point to make it a sharp point. And for this button point, let's click and drag the handles 5 pixels to the left like this. Grab the move tool to select this entire orange shape. Press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add that copy in front. Deselect the copy and double click the fill color from your toolbar to replace it with 209, 88 and 24. Switch to the rectangle tool and create again a shape that covers the right half of this orange shape. Switch to the move tool, hold down the shift key and select this rectangle along with the copy of your orange shape. And again click this intersect button from the pathfinder panel. Make sure that you have nothing selected. Press again Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Double click the stroke color and replace it with 181, 77 and 23. Select the line segment tool from your toolbar and use it to create a new 62 pixels vertical path. Move it in this exact location. And then focus on the appearance panel where you need to open the stroke flyout panel, increase the stroke weight to 2 pixels, select with profile number 4, and again remember to check this round cap button. Now let's add the horizontal paths, so reselect the line segment tool from your toolbar. 
start with a 16 pixels horizontal path move it in this exact location and then drag it 16 pixels down hold down the alt key and drag a copy of this path 12 pixels down and another one 13 pixels down increase the length of this path to 20 and for this one make it 32 hold down the shift key to select all three paths go to the appearance panel and select with profile number one from this list and then go again to object path and add anchor points to add those anchor points in the middle of the path make sure that you have the direct selection tool selected and let's focus on this first point select it hold down the shift key to add this other anchor point to your selection and simply drag them three pixels down move to this other path again select this middle point and for this one let's drag it five pixels down now switch to the selection tool and use it to select all the shapes that make up the second leaf design press ctrl and g to group them and then go to effect warp and flag make sure that the vertical box is checked set the bend to minus five percent click ok to apply the effect and this will be your second leaf design Moving to the next leaf design, start again by pressing Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Double click the fill color and replace it with 252, 209 and 53. Select the ellipse tool and click on your artboard to create a 20 by 40 pixel shape. Switch to the anchor point tool and click this point. And then use the direct selection tool to select this sharp point and move it 18 pixels up. Using the selection tool, let's reselect this entire path. You can zoom in on it and then press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Deselect this copy and change the fill color to 241, 176 and 22. Select the rectangle tool and use it to create a shape that covers the right half of the CLO shape. Switch to the selection tool, hold down the shift key to select this rectangle along with the copy of your yellow shape and then click this intersect button from the pathfinder panel. Remember to deselect this shape and press again shift and X. Double click the stroke color and replace it with 219. 96 and 42 and then reselect the line segment tool from your toolbar to create a new 62 pixels vertical path use the selection tool to move this path in this exact location focus on the appearance panel and open the stroke flyout panel increase the stroke width to 2 pixels select with profile number 4 and don't forget to check this round cap button and then select all the shapes that make up the CLO leaf press ctrl and g to group them and then go to effect warp and arc make sure that you have this vertical box checked set the bend to 10 percent click ok to apply the effect and this will be your third leaf design moving to the next and final leaf design let's start again by pressing shift and x to swap the fill and stroke color settings Double click the fill color and replace it with 200, 60 and 37 and then select the ellipse tool and use it to create a 16 by 48 pixels shape. Switch to the anchor point tool and for the beginning click this bottom anchor point. Move to the top and just click and drag to get these handles. Hold down the alt key which will allow you to move each handle separately let's go one pixel to the right and five pixels down again remember that you can have a look inside the info panel for all this information and for the second handle make sure that you are mirroring the first one once you are done you can deselect this shape press again shift and x to swap the fill and stroke color settings and change the stroke color to 137 47 and 59 Select the line segment tool from your toolbar and use it to create a 38 pixels vertical path. 
move this new pad in this exact location and then focus on the appearance panel where you need to open the stroke flyout panel and just select width profile number 4 from this menu. Select both of these objects and press Ctrl G to group them and then go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Set both of these scale sliders to 80%, change the angle to 55 degrees, enter to copies and most importantly make sure that you check this middle bottom reference point. Click OK to apply this effect and then press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy of this group in front. Move to the appearance panel where you can open the already applied transform effect. Change the angle to minus 55 degrees. Click OK to apply this new effect and then select both of these groups and go to object and expand appearance. As you can see now you have a group of shapes selected. We want to ungroup this group of shapes, so press Ctrl, Shift and G once, twice and one more time to get rid of all those groups. Now hold down the Shift key to select all these thin shapes and unite them using this button from the Pathfinder panel and then repeat the same technique for these red shapes. Select all five shapes and click this Unite button from the Pathfinder panel. Press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy of this shape in the same place. Deselect it and replace the fill color from your toolbar with 175, 49 and 28. Pick the rectangle tool and use it to create a shape that covers the right half from this red leaf. Switch to the selection tool, hold down the shift key and select this rectangle along with the copy of your red leaf. Click the intersect button from the Pathfinder panel and now press Ctrl and the left bracket key to easily move the selected shape backward. Reselect the rectangle tool and use it to create a 2 by 15 pixels shape. Switch to the direct selection tool which will allow you to set the corner radius for this rectangle to 1 pixel and then use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact location. You can use the eyedropper tool to grab this color for this rounded rectangle and then use the selection tool to select all the shapes that make up this red leaf and group them. This will be your final leaf design. Now that you have your leaf designs, let's turn them into brushes. Start with the green one. Just select this group, click this new brush button from the brushes panel, check the scatter brush box and click OK to open the scatter brush options window where you can set the settings for your new brush. Start by naming this brush green, set all four variables to random, and let's set the size to range between 20 and 40%. For the spacing, make it go between 50 and 80%. The scatter should go from minus 60% to minus 30%. And finally, for the rotation, set the range between 0 and 180 degrees. Once you're done, click OK, and your new brush should show up in the brushes panel. Let's move to the next leaf design, select it and again save it as a scatter brush. Name it orange, again make it all random. And set the ranges go between 20 and 50%, 20 and 40%, minus 50 and 0%, and again 0 and 180 degrees. Click OK to save this new brush and continue to the next leaf design. Save this as a new scatter brush and name it yellow. Set all these variables to random. And then set these values to range between 20 and 50, 40 and 60, minus 30 and 0, and finally minus 180 and 180 degrees. Click OK to save this new brush and select this final leaf design to save it as a new scatter brush. 
name it red. Again, set all these variables to random and set the values to range between 40 and 75, 20 and 50, minus 60 and minus 20, and 0 and 180 degrees. Click OK to save this final brush. And now that you have your brushes saved, you can select these shapes and simply delete them. Now that you have your brushes, let's put together the text effect. We'll start with the background, so select the rectangle tool from your toolbar and use it to create an 860 by 510 pixels shape. Go to the control panel and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and then click these two buttons to easily center your selected shape. To fill it with a radial gradient, click this button from the gradient panel. Use the gradient tool to squeeze this gradient like this. And when you are done, return to the gradient panel to adjust the gradient colors. Double click this one, change the color mode to RGB and replace this color with 223, 207 and 147. And then double click this other color stop, again change the color mode to RGB and replace this color with 213, 183 and 140. Let's continue with the text, so select the type tool from your toolbar and focus on the character panel. And before we set the settings for the text that we're about to add, make sure that you press Ctrl and 0 to fit the artboard on your entire screen. Now select the Etna font, set the size to 250, increase the tracking to 100, and then just click on your artboard to type in fall. Press the escape key to easily switch to the move tool and move your text roughly in the center of the artboard like this. Make sure that this text remains selected as we move on. Click this non-swatch from the swatches panel to remove the existing text color and then go to the appearance panel to add a new fill using this button. Keep it selected and change the color with 144 49 and 62 and then go to effect stylize and drop shadow change the blend mode to normal lower the opacity to 30 percent set the offset values to 0 and 5 set the blur to 10 pixels and the color to 107 29 and 22 click ok and ok and then select the stroke from the appearance panel Set the color to 241, 176, and 22, and then go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and Roughen. Check the Absolute and Smooth boxes. Set both of these sliders to 5. Click OK to apply the effect, and return to the Appearance panel to open the Stroke Flyout panel, where you need to increase the stroke width to 2 pixels, and select with profile number 2. Now add a second stroke for your text using this button. Make sure that you have it selected. Change the color to 92, 91 and 11. Open the stroke flyout panel and lower the stroke size to 1 pixel. Again select with profile number 2 and go again to effect, distort and transform and roughen. Check again these two boxes, set both sliders to 5, click OK to apply the effect and return to the appearance panel to add a new stroke. Now it's time to put your brushes to work. Start by selecting the red one to apply it on this new stroke and then go to effect, stylize and drop shadow to apply a subtle drop shadow effect. Let's change the blend mode to soft light, increase the opacity to 40%, set both offset values to 2 pixels, decrease the blur to 0, change the color to black, click OK to apply the effect and return to the appearance panel to add a new stroke for your text. This time apply your orange brush and go again to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. Keep the blend mode set to Soft Light, 
just lower the opacity to 20%, increase both offset values to 3 pixels, click OK to apply this new effect and return to the appearance panel to add a new stroke using this same button. Just apply your yellow brush and go again to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. This time increase the opacity to 50%, set both offset values to just one pixel, click OK to apply the effect and return to the appearance panel to add one more stroke. Apply your remaining green brush and go to Effect, Apply Drop Shadow, which will add the same drop shadow effect that you use for your yellow brush. With this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. If you are looking to learn even more, you can always check out some of the many tutorials that Envato Task Plus has to offer. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.